draw slasher movie villains. So this one's yours. Hello, everyone. My piece is based on the fact that for the original Halloween movie, the Michael Myers mask is just a sun-bleached William Shatner mask. Yeah, it was a Kirk. Yeah, it was for a Kirk costume. It was just apparently just in a store window and... Got gross. Got super gross. <laughs> and someone looked at that and went, wow, Pale Shatner is horrifying. <laughs> Let's use it for the movie. So I decided to do a piece where a kid in a Captain Kirk outfit compliments Michael Myers on his Kirk outfit. You were drawing on your tablet. Yes. Which is why the, the mouse is elsewhere as you're drawing. Yeah, there were some um there were some issues with the recording recording the, the mouse improperly, but it it worked when I was drawing it, so That's what matters. It's just yeah. so funny. So it's like you're over there, but the lines are correct. They are where they need to be. This really was important. Mm -hmm. For any artist to have the lines be where they're supposed to be. That is the hope, generally speaking. I, it, I've yet to master that skill, but I'm working on it. <laughs> a lot of my lines end up haphazard. I scribble and then erase a lot. Like, I erase to build what I want it to look like. So, I feel you. I understand. See, so yeah, I went back to the, the classic... Uh, original series costume and phaser. I have references for those. Oh, look at this creepy child. Yeah, I'm not good at drawing kids. Oh. Because you gotta embiggen the head. Yes, their heads must be embiggened. But, like, there's a proportion <laughs> thing to it, too, because you can't... Because you don't want them to look like bobbleheads. They're supposed to look like children. Right. They, they still have to be kids, rather than just short adults. Good bobbleheads. I am a short adult. I am a big. Child. You are. You are. We are not children. I'm a hulking large. We act like children. No, we we act like adults because we are adults. We chose our adulthood to be full of fun. If you want to be a miserable adult, that's your problem. <laughs> Fair. But, but we're going to watch cartoons and we're going to eat candy in our pajamas. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to hurt anybody. And we're going to have long discussions about comic books. Yes. And that's how adulting looks for us. Yes. I think our generation just saw how miserable adults were and just went, nope, I'll do it differently. Yeah, I don't want that. I just didn't. This is looking pretty quirky. Oh, these kids aren't growing up. Well, you made it look so appealing. <laughs> yeah. I like the position that Michael Myers is in. Well, that's... He's got a body language to him. What I really appreciate about a lot of the slasher villains from this time period is they all had very distinct body posture. Yeah. Um, you saw it later with Jason, because Jason started out just being like, whatever, but then I think it was... Uh, it was either Kane Hodder or the guy before him who introduced the whole thing where Jason's like a slow lumbering brute, so his head turns and then his body turns. Well so there's a pace to his movement. Yeah. But Michael Myers always had that. Michael Myers was always like um, uh, Pepe Le Pew to his victims. Yeah, he just is unrelenting. But he's always he's always like very forward in his upper body. It's an aggressive posture. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in Jason's defense, <laughs> defense, maybe, uh, he was his mom. Well, they were... The, the problem is, over the movies, he has mutated and changed and turned out to be, and sometimes he's a zombie, and... Well, the first movie, the first movie, it was his mom yeah. that was killing people, and then he shows up at the end as Mutant Lake Child. Yeah, Mutant Lake Second Child. Second movie, he's a living Mutant Lake Child killer. I think, it, I think in the fourth movie... It was fake Jason. Someone was being imposter Jason. Yeah, that, that's why it's hard to say this is what Jason is, because he's changed. Whereas Michael Myers, there was, you know, the remake. Up, up until he became but... zombie Jason in either five or six. Like, that's really where the lore came in, and that's what everyone remembers about Jason. Yeah. Is zombie Jason who went on a prom boat to Manhattan... And then yeah, went to space. There's some implications about where everything takes place. But this is Michael Myers. 
I think the fact that they were able to sail to New York City, I think New Jersey ended up being the actual, like, place where Camp Crystal Lake was. And there are some real Camp Crystal Lakes in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of Camp Crystal Lakes. I'm sure they all changed their name now, but... (laughs) Surprisingly, they didn't, from what I've seen. But this one you're drawing is Michael Myers. This is Michael Myers. Which, I'm not as much of a fan of the Halloween movies. I understand. The first one's great for, like, a suspense horror. Yeah. But then, like... I don't know why there needed to be sequels. They they aren't as fun as the other ones. Mm. Well, to me. I, I agree, because the other ones, it's easy enough to get into a dark comedy. Yeah. To slash her in a ridiculous way. Whereas Michael Myers is realistic enough that it's just... It's hard to find a humor in it. Which makes it legitimately scary. They, they play it super straight. Yeah. But also, like, goofy shit happens. Like, he gets decapitated, but then they retro it in the next movie, so it wasn't him who got decapitated. Yeah. So they can have another movie. Which so, one was it? There was a, a clown... But they're playing it straight the whole time. There was someone dressed as a clown who just wouldn't get out of his way, and he would not have died. He, he absolutely was not going to be a victim, but because he wouldn't get out of Michael Myers's way, he wound up dead. It's a very brief scene. Because I don't remember. Michael Myers has a, a track. He is on. <laughs> he beelines. You just gotta move to the side and you'll be fine. He, he as has long like, as you're not his half-sister. Exactly. He's got the people he's gonna get. And otherwise, you're probably fine. Unless you do what that guy did. And just stay directly in his path on purpose. Yeah. Don't know what clown boy expected. I just remember him being a clown. Let us know in the comments if you have any idea what I'm talking about. Which which Halloween was this? How many have there been? Um, are we counting Season of the Witch? I mean, technically it was a Halloween movie. He just it, wasn't it in it. It is not a Michael Myers movie. It's no. a Halloween movie. Yeah. And technically, given that what we talked about with Jason, Michael Myers has been absent from less Halloween movies than Jason was That's true. from <laughs> Friday the 13th movies. That is true. And they also, I also like how they directly inspired each other. Because Halloween was a big hit. And then they're just like, we gotta do a Friday the 13th. We gotta do an April Fool's Day. Yeah. We gotta do a prom night. And like all these like cheapo blockbuster street. <laughs> I mean, now, now my brain has decided that Leprechaun has to do a St. Patrick's Day. And I'm sure that's not true. I we, assume that's not uh, true. We could check. There have I been mean, Valentine's Day horror There have movies. been. There have been. A number of them. The, the one with the, the minor guy. Yeah. Which there was they a 3D remade. version of that. Yeah, I think that was the 3D version. Yeah. That was in the aughts. Oh, man, everything was 3D. There was Piranha 3D. Yeah, there was uh, Jaws 3D. Yeah. How can you forget Jaws 3D and how awful it looks in 2D? It was, oh, it doesn't work. It's, it is a gimmick, and that's it. Imagine... Like, after the original Jaws, like, for special effects at the mm-hmm. time, like, you look at an HD and you're just like, oh, I can see the hinges inside the mouth. But at the time, watching it on the big screen, it scared fucking everyone. Oh, yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. But imagine, um, now I want you to contrast these two, like, emotions in your mind from Jaws movies. Mm-hmm. You've got when the, the shark first, like, is fully visible in the first movie, and how everyone just takes a step back from it. Yeah. Like, in the theater, you took a step back. You're just like, yeah. whoa, fuck that. You tried to lean into the seat. Uh, I want to contrast that within Jaws 3D, when there's just the, um, the cut image of the shark. That they just float forward. It's not moving at all. It's just floating yeah. forward on the screen until it stops and then the glass shatters. Yes. Kind of a fall from grace on that one. A little bit. I do like that they've played the movie on a screen when everybody's in a swimming pool. I think that's a clever way to show Jaws. The Lagoon. I'd watch the Lagoon Jaws. Mm-hmm. When they play it like nighttime in a saltwater marsh and they're just like, yeah, I hope nothing touches you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't need that in my life, but it's great. I'll do that. It's very interesting. But I... It's very noisy films. to get to the, the snack bar at the yes. Lagoon. <laughs> do you want a Coke? <laughs> yeah, slasher films weren't 
entirely my thing growing up. I was more of a universal horror person. I was very much a garbage slasher. Well, in my elementary years, I got I got hooked on horror first with those bright orange square books in right. my elementary school library that told you all about the universal horror monsters. But I very quickly uh, convinced my grandparents to let me rent uh, Gremlins and Child's Play. <laughs> I just watched the Universal Horror films with my dad because he would be watching them, and then I would sit down and watch them. I don't know that it was necessarily his intention, but it was going on, and so I wasn't going to stop them. watching them. Yeah, <laughs> he was going to be like, "Oh no, my child isn't allowed to love the same things I love." He was going to let it happen, and I I love them so much. But slashers, it depends on the slasher. I like movies that kind of flip the script a little bit. There are certainly a lot of really bad slashers. Like, I don't think that uh, Evil Dead would be considered a slasher. No, Evil Dead's not a slasher. Uh, Evil Dead um, is, a, is in a different place. I'm trying to yeah. think of other stuff that's like in that sort of like weird genre. It, it overlaps a lot because it, it was the original, you know, Cabin in the Woods, that, that nonsense. Yeah. It influenced so many other films. But the TV show remarked on the fact that to the outside world, it seemed like Ash was the slasher. Yeah, because everyone around him always died. Right, and I appreciated that. To someone who didn't know what was going on, he was terrifying. Here's the color. The classic gold. The gold of command. We don't have money, but we still put emphasis on gold. Mm-hmm. And red shirts got to be less of a problem in later series. Yeah. I mean, red, red was security, right? So, like, those are the people in danger. Yeah. You needed one in your way party. And but if, well, if you were an ensign, if you were red shirt and ensign, it was... Hope you had a name, because otherwise you were not going to make it. Ensign, you're with me. Ensign who? Oh, God, no! <laughs> oh, no. What was, was it, uh... Galaxy, Galaxy Quest? Galaxy Quest, yes. Where, when they rebooted that show, the Ensign got a name. Yeah. Galaxy Quest is a great Star Trek movie. <laughs> it knew what it was, and I love it so much. Yeah. It was absolutely for Star Trek fans. Oh, even did that. Yeah. Have to give him the proper number of stripes. Just which I still don't know if I did. I think I did. I think three stripes is Captain. Because isn't that the whole thing with Captain Crunch is that he's actually an admiral because he has four stripes? Captain Horatio Magellan Crunch? Yeah. I don't know. And I also, I don't need to know his full name. I also don't need to know Donald Fauntleroy Duck, but I know that. Well, why wouldn't you? At least, like, Charles Entertainment Cheese is obvious because Chuck E. Cheese's middle name is Entertainment, and it's obvious. It's obvious, you say. Entertainment is how many, yes, that's, that's how many people do you think know that Chuck E. Cheese's middle name is Entertainment? Entertainment is his middle like how everyone, many, knows what percentage? everyone knows. Charles Entertainment you Cheese. You think it's a hundred? You know. You think I knew it before I dated you? <laughs> do you think our D and D group knew it before you told them? <laughs> these, these are important facts to me. <laughs> <laughs> My God! Don't shame me. I'm not shaming you. Just like, well, everyone knows Donald Fauntleroy Duck. <laughs> no, like, no, I'm... that one, no one would know. That one, my, <laughs> my life was forever changed because I had a, a book that was all about Donald Duck, and that was one of the fun facts. <laughs> Donald Fauntleroy Duck. I don't know why I know the serial captain's name. It just became an obsession of yours. Fantasy character middle names. Just to look it up. Just to know. I must know. Because somebody thinks about these things. I tried to give the the young boy, like, sandier hair and stuff, just to set him, all, set him apart. To up the youthfulness. <laughs> I like his teeth. Yeah. Well, he's, he's one of those annoying horror horror movie kids. One of those. Who's just a total bastard and just like, I usually don't root for the kid to die, but I'm not going to be upset if this one dies. Special case. Then inevitably, like, they reveal, I was like, oh, he just got thrown in a trash bin. He's not dead. He 
he looks like he's a nice enough kid, this one. And he's just smarmy. Yeah. At my house, we have a Nintendo Entertainment System. My dad works for Nintendo. I don't want to go to your house. It smells like soup. <laughs> your house smells like poor. <laughs> my house has bean bags. That seems to have tickled you. Yeah, I had beanbags. I had beanbags. I would. <laughs> you also had Nintendo Entertainment System. You were you were the kid with the entertainment system. Well, because my my dad was a, a gamer too. Yeah. You know, he wanted to. He always had the, the biggest too. TV. Yes, yes, that was. And then I would wind up with a big television because it was like he'd get a larger TV, and then someone else in the family, like my sister, would get the one from the living room. I think so. We go like dad, living room, then it, my sister, and then me. And we would just kind of cycle through the TVs that way. Every year, two new TVs. No, not every year. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you specifically when, actually. Eventually, we'd get new TVs. Whenever there was a move forward in TV technology. When we visited your dad in Florida, he wanted one of those curved ones. Yeah. One of them big old boys. I feel like you'd have to sit directly in front of it. It actually, it wasn't bad for like a 35 degree in front of it, but it's, um, hmm. like with a normal flat TV, if you're off to the side, like it's not great, but it's fine. But with the curved TV, if you're too off, far off to the side, it's just useless. Yeah. You're not seeing half the screen because it's not facing you anymore. <laughs> so, but you had, you had a good setup. I liked the theater chairs he had. Man, I, man knows his movie setups. This is true. I like the colors you're choosing for the phaser. Yep. Tried to do the the classic, a uh, little bit of the blue metal, a little of the yellow metal. Hmm. I I do appreciate the amount of thought that went into this piece. That's that's good to hear because I I felt like this one was a little bit like just ripped out. You can tell who everybody is. Yeah, if this was going someplace, I would put more planning into the composition and everything, but I just want to make sure I was uh, doing the idea and doing it quick enough that it's a speed draw. Doing the prompt. Yeah. Taking the prompt, getting it done, here's the idea, and if it, if it turned out really good, I could revisit it later and use yeah. this as, like, a draft. Appreciate little blood splashes. Yeah. Well, he's out on Halloween. He's definitely killed, like, four people. <laughs> I think it's time to experiment with the background. Because we've got uh, an orangey yellow and a green, so I wanted to do, like, something in the purple sphere to sort of, like, complete that color wheel. But, you know, also gets a uh, nighttime Halloween vibe going, so... I thought briefly about doing an entire, like, cul-de-sac scene behind them, but I very quickly said, no, I'm not going to do that. No, that, that could have been cool, but... For a, full, for a full piece, that would have been neat. I think when I drew Michael Myers, he was just sort of standing on a porch. Here's how you do this as a, as a full uh, piece. You have Mike Myers in a cul-de-sac with trick-or-treaters, He's got his uh, Kirk mask on, and everyone else is dressed as... And he's surrounded by children dressed as other children, uh, like other characters from the Star Trek yeah. original series. So you have a Uhura, you have a Bones, you have a Spock. Yeah, everybody else. And anyone in the know will get it. Yeah. That just says nice Kirk costume. Yeah, nice Kirk costume. Nice Kirk costume. Mine costs $50. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My mom got it from the big Macy's from the next town over, not the small Macy that your mom goes to. I have a Nintendo Entertainment System. My dad works for Nintendo. <laughs> you you hate this child you've created. He's not the worst child. He's not like a bully. He's just feels lesser, so he keeps having to tell people how much greater he is. Alright. He's he's that. That's fair. But he's not he's not a bully, he's just socially not great and, and that's why he gets thrown in the trash and he doesn't die in this movie and here's the final piece yep 
I ended up pur like purpling out his eyes a bit just because I was just like, it's a mask. I need to push those back. And I just pushed him back real far. Oh, well, yeah. I don't remember really seeing his eyes in the costume. No, you didn't. But the sh the shading purposely kept his eyes out. That was part of it. It was like he was just an emotionless killing machine. Mm. It was pure evil. I don't know that I ever saw a lot of the later ones. I don't think I saw a remake. They, they get really repetitive. Because he, he breaks out to kill somebody for some reason, and the the doctor shows up to warn everyone. It's like, Michael Myers, you're all doomed! And he kills, like, three people, and then is assumed dead or captured again, and repeat next year. <laughs> like, this happened... They had 20 Halloweens? The most wonderful time. Yeah. They had a lot of Halloween. I haven't even seen the more recent ones. No. Because they brought Jamie Lee Curtis back. Yeah, that was really exciting. I want, I want I to see that see one. Let's I, let's get that one because then they made a sequel it. to that one too. I'll like there that. there are a lot of Halloween movies. Oh wow, why? I I don't know. I, people like them. They they obviously still keep making money. People keep going, which means I'll watch the original any time. But like there's yeah. a, there's a bunch in the middle that's just like no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Please one, put this back. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Ant Man. Uh, Paul Rudd was in one. What? Okay. He was an internet hacker who like knew Michael Myers' secret of and stole a baby. He stole a baby. There was a stolen baby for some reason. Huh. Oh well. We learned a lot today. <laughs> so this one is mine, and I, <laughs> I drew Jason. I went full Friday Thirteenth. Because he's someone that I hadn't drawn before. I had drawn Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger. I do like how, as you start this, you're like, I'm going to draw Jason. But the first minute of this is just happy little trees. <laughs> I'm going like, to draw a mutant lake murderer, and here's a mountain, and we're going to draw a tree, and then we're going to give the tree a friend. Like, I don't, I don't go outside enough. I don't know what outside looks like. So I had to figure that out. <laughs> this tree in the front changes and then leaves. I wanted a tree there. I wanted it to break up the scene. I think your composition that you end with is really good, though. I appreciate that. And thinking about where the sign is going to be, how it's going to be facing, you know. I mean, this is this is definitely a scene that I could imagine coming out of an actual Friday the 13th movie. I was going for a little goofy, because the later ones especially, the moment... <laughs> it doesn't he, in two different ones, bash someone to death with another person? And like They a, do it in an earlier one, and then they do a callback in Jason Yeah, Banks. Yeah, in, in the sleeping they, they, bags. They put him in the hologram, and he gets to reenact his murder. The original sleeping bag scene, like, the way it ended up being cut was just one whack, yeah. but the way it was originally cut was he beats that tree for, like, a minute. Yeah. Like, I forget who was playing Jason. It was just like, that was exhausting. <laughs> just what? Like, it was just, and they had, like, an inside the, the, the bag cam going to watch the face just smash. It was, it was apparently really over the top. And then, like, but in the final cut, it was just whack, drop, done. Yeah. Because the ratings board is just like, no! <laughs> you can't do that. You, no! That's too many. That's too many whacks. <laughs> So then they did a callback when they stuck him in the hologram room in uh, Jason yeah. X. Because I remember that. I, I wanted that kind of humor. Just the ridiculousness of it. And the idea that he... I made him a little bit like Godzilla in that he just returns to the water. That seems to be where he lives in my mind. Where do you think he lives? He lives, he lives in the water. He's got a, a shack with his mom's head and sweater mm -hmm. out in the middle of the, the lake. That's how you get him to let his guard down so you can actually kill him. So, you know, he's just coming home from a day of work. <laughs> <laughs> As I've said it, <laughs> just day of work. All right. Just to tell mom the grind is killing me. I think I need a new career. <laughs> This pose was a little difficult because I wanted his head to be kind of small. Because he doesn't necessarily have hair, depending on the version of him you're drawing. He does kind of have a pinhead, because they really make his shoulder ma yeah. massive. Yeah, he's got a tiny head. Yeah. 
I wanted him to be sort of a combination of a few different Jasons. All the Jasons. Yeah. Still recognizable either way. That was my, my hope. All the tiny little dots of his mask. I don't know how to sport. I hope this looks like a hockey mask. It looks like a hockey mask. So. And I saw three different masks and just went, well, I like this aspect from this one and this part's kind of pretty and this part, and I just put it all together. There's a neat continuity thing they did after, I think it was, I think it was four or five. Um, cause someone attacks him with a machete, yeah. uh, and cuts a, di a divot in his mask. Yeah. And every movie after that, I kept the Yeah, divot. I tried to do... Yeah. Yeah, that. you got it. Yeah. That, that's exactly what I tried to do. Like, he got damaged at one point, right? Because yeah. <laughs> I so vaguely remember all of these movies. I, even the ones that are just a mess are amazingly entertaining. They are entertaining. Like, watch Jason Goes to Hell. And while, <laughs> oh, you're, you're, while you're watching it, try to, like, describe the plot to yourself. It's... Ugh. You'll have more fun with that than the actual movie. <laughs> that one's not my favorite, but I appreciate that it exists. It's both are true. It's very much a pinnacle of uh, just they needed to crank out a movie and they didn't care how bad the script was. This is fine. This is good enough. Yeah. So I I appreciate the Jason series, while at the same time I don't feel the need to watch them ever again. <laughs> but I like the aesthetic. And I've, I've seen them. I've seen all the Jason movies. I don't know that I can separate them in my brain, because they all kind of blend together. But I've seen them. There are certain scenes that are definitely in one movie. Like, he punches the guy's head off in Takes Manhattan. Yeah. He's a worm under the floorboards and goes to hell. He's got the satchel on his head in two, I think. See, two you think. Two, I think. See? Well, I think in three, I think it goes one, he's the mutated lake boy. See, see, but that's what I'm saying, is there's some element of, like, which one, which one? <laughs> well, yeah, there's... They're all Jason. They're ah, all Jason. and and not. All at the same time. He is Schrodinger's Jason. I do every so often get on a kick where I'll just, like, I'll pick a franchise and just watch all of them, and I have done that with the Jason series. Like, just over a weekend, I'm just like, I'm going to watch every single Friday the 13th. Uh, I don't want to. I did, Well, I do it with other stuff, too. Like, the, the classic one is typically in December, I'll pick a weekend and I'll just watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The extended edition, all the way through, in a weekend. His hand here, I wanted to make look a little bit bloated, like lumpy. But yeah. it was hard to do that without it just looking cartoony. I didn't want to have, like, a, like a Mickey Mouse hand. <laughs> I just oh. wanted him to be kind of bumpy and gross. I'm coming for you kids having sex. Stop it. <laughs> I wanted him to just be bumpy and gross. In general. Don't do drugs or drink beer at my lake. Motherfucker. <laughs> Use your words. Not your bits. I tried. Words didn't work. <laughs> I had to finish the bit. <laughs> it's, I had to hit all three parts of the bit. And then now I'm done. I don't have to do it again. Oh, Disney is buying all the properties. Disney, the, what is, the, Disney owns Fox, right? So Disney has aliens. So the alien queen is technically a Disney princess. So trying to decide about the angle here. <laughs> the arm was hard. Um, it's a good beefy arm. But I had to figure out where bicep versus like radius and ulna and that whole, how his arm is actually going. What is forward and what is back. And I made you pose for it. Because so, everything I do, I make yeah. you pose for it. Yeah. Yes. So, does Disney own any slasher movies now? Because they have Fox. I assume they're going to own everything eventually. I. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> they are the ultimate monopoly. And they will just own entertainment. And that's that's it. That's all there is. The, the different okay. entertainment is my middle name now. <laughs> yes. You know, Chuck E. Cheese was a rat until, like, it was, like, 2009 or something that he became officially a mouse. And I was like, no, well, no, Well, it's probably on. not a good idea to associate your restaurant with a rat. 
Yeah, but he's clearly a rat. His ears are smaller, his nose is longer, his tail doesn't have any fur on it. Like, he's he's obviously a, a rat. He's not a mouse. Yeah. They even tried to redesign him. They gave him, like, a backwards hat and a skateboard. And No, we know. They made him softer with rounder ears. But you know what? No. I know. I know your truth. But yeah, um... So, so Michael Mouse will eventually control all of entertainment, and I understand that. But for the meantime, here's Jason with his little weird ear. You know what? I, I'm going to talk about my, my favorite slasher movies, mm -hmm. which are the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series. Yeah. And I'm also going to talk about how it's, on retrospect, it's super weird to me that the child molester murderer became like the protagonist of that series and was just like, oh, I wonder what quips the child See, molester's going to say. It's because he's funny. It's, it's the Beetlejuice problem. It's like, because his the title of the movie is Beetlejuice, people forget that he's only in about 17 minutes of the film. And he's, he's not someone you root for. He's no, doing he's the things. bad guy. So, like, the cartoon doesn't make any sense. I love the cartoon, but the cartoon's more like Drop Dead Fred. Because in order to make him a main character, they had to get rid of Barbara and Adam, the actual main characters. There's just not room for everybody. Yeah. And then when the musical happened, and people started coming to me and saying things like, oh, but it's so much more woke than the original movie, and the original movie doesn't really hold up, does it? And it's like, why? Why? Because the bad guy was actually a bad guy? Because he was actually a villain? Oh no, you mean Beetlejuice was problematic because he was an asshole? He was supposed to be an asshole. They made it pretty clear you weren't supposed to like Beetlejuice. Like, he was goosing the ladies. Yeah, he was and gross. And charming the men. He was fully gross. But because he was funny and memorable, and quite frankly played by Michael Keaton, who's just always charming no matter what he does. Michael Keaton is severely underrated. He had he had a huge peak, and then he just kind of dropped out, and then he came back, and he just reminded he's everyone he's still very good. And, and that's really... Uh, He's not the problem. But the character like that is exactly what happened with Freddy. In that he's not supposed to be like, well, he's supposed to be disgusting, but he was funny. Yeah. He was funny, and that makes him kind of charming, and then it's okay that he's awful. We want him all the time to be everywhere. They they did it poorly, but I did like that in the um in Freddy's Dead, mm -hmm. they they amped up the effect on reality that Freddy had. Yeah. With the, like, the, the people having memory loss in the entire town just, yeah. like, going nuts. It was a neat concept. And in a death spiral. It was definitely a neat concept. But, like, in... It was another I didn't one that have got... A, I, I lost the rest of that thought. <laughs> it's just gone. It was another one that got remade. Yeah. And, and in, in the remake, they left it sort of ambiguous for a while whether or not he was a child molester. And he wasn't as funny. They were really trying to make it know this is a scary movie. Yeah. But I understand why that didn't play out well for a lot of the audience. I I think making a scary Freddy is, is fine, but I wish they had like fully pulled the trigger on keeping it ambiguous because if if the plot of the movie is child molester gets killed by a mob because a paperwork error gets him out of prison scot free after he murders children. Right. Then like, does he get to come back as a vengeful spirit? I think the vengeance yeah. has been done. The the scales are even at that point. So him coming back for revenge only really works as to stay ambiguous if the mob was right or not. Yeah, I in a scary I movie. really liked that idea and then they just drop it. Yeah. And back when it originally came out it was just a, a little more acceptable to four mobs. <laughs> Like, at the time where he would have died. <laughs> Back so, in those days, if you want to form a mob, it just... Yeah. yeah. But... So, well, that dealt with a very real thing in, like, suburban America, where yeah. you have all these, like, 1980s straight-laced button-up parents who, like, 15 years earlier were up to shenanigans that they're just not talking about right now. Right. <laughs> now, that, it would have been an interesting oh. film the that darks. we did not get to see. But... I appreciated what they tried to do with the remake. It just didn't quite work. Those are the the dream world was heavily like Silent Hill influenced. Yeah. Like there was an obvious switch. And I think part of the scary part of the first movie is that dream stuff would start happening just randomly in reality. Right. 
you used you used music cues and there were some visual things and it was very dream logic-y, but like you don't know you right didn't away. know if the character was dreaming until something really truly weird happened or in later movies when Freddy popped out and said a pun. Right. And then it was, oh, this is a problem. No, I I like that it was more ambiguous. Here's me trying to figure out light shadow. I want him kind of gray. Well, he's been rotting for a while. Yeah. I and like the blood on that signpost. I appreciate that. I, I like that you like it. I also like the, the shading on the mask. It's, it's subtle enough to definitely just give it shape, though. Thank you. Did he ever get a remake? Yes. If you're not, if you're, he saw about his Jason Voorhees, yes. Yeah. And it was so forgettable, I've seen it three times, and the last two times I forgot until the third act that I had seen Wait, it Wait, and I watched it once with you and immediately forgot it. Yeah. It's, oh. It was very forgettable. Oh. And then there's a scene at the end where it's like he's wrapped in a chain that gets caught in a wood right. chipper. And at that point I go, wait, I've seen this movie before. Right. At the very end. At the very end, I'm just like, well, I'm wasting my goddamn time. <laughs> Sometimes remakes are fun. Sometimes. I, mean, I don't remember anything about that movie except that scene, though. And then every so often I'm just like, oh, they remade Friday the 13th. I wonder if I should watch like, it. Like Evil Dead... The remake of Evil Dead I appreciated because there's still Anne Ash, but it's not Ashley J. Williams. It's it's a girl. I and, liked it. Well, it still had some of the same beats, but it wasn't trying to be the original. No, well, the original Evil Dead was a horror with some funny elements, and Evil Dead 2 just went full horror comedy. Yeah. Like, it was... Well, uh, some, of the, some of the comedy in the first one, I think, was not on purpose. <laughs> I think it was just they were a bunch of college kids trying to make a movie. Yeah, just editing it just as quickly as possible. Yeah. But I liked the remake of Evil Dead because it was a very dark tone yeah. of everything. Like, the things were appropriately scary. Like, yeah. your friend stands up after, like, bleeding out and starts coming at you with yellow eyes. And they react with appropriate fear. Yeah, and there was still certain elements that were like, oh, I remember that. I remember the scene, but with different characters. Some of it was, was very gratuitous in oh, a way that I think was to track, like, uh, someone pulled a needle out of their eye and they focus on that for, like, a minute. I'm okay with the gratuitous because I feel like that's more Sam Raimi. <laughs> I well, feel yes. like it knew its source material in that way. No, that that's true. I just, I thought, um... <sighs> it was needlessly gross in some ways. I like when they imply things and your brain can fill it in. Like, everyone remembers Psycho, like the death scene being so bloody. And, and it's, really, it's not. really not. Just you some see, chocolate syrup down You the see drain. some midriff, you see a shadow moving up and down, and you see some chocolate syrup in the drain. Yeah. But your brain fills that in. Oh, yeah. Like, same thing with, when um, Jaws kills the, kills the kid in the cove. Right. All you see is a of water and, like, red, some red water. Right. But your brain fills in the horror. I think concentrating on the eye shot as they slowly pull the needle out. Um, it's it's squicky, but it's not as horrifying. No, it's just squicky. Yeah. There's a different reaction. It's fine. It's just I I would have preferred if they, they went to the horror and there were things that were that were unseen. Yeah. There's some element of horror audiences that has changed over time too because like the 1931 dracula we have a drop of blood at one point because redfield pricks his finger yeah and that that at the time was enough to go oh no you couldn't get away with that now but i love those horror movies because like you said a lot of the horror is just in your own head whatever you're coming up with is going to be worse yeah they and showing on screen like not, I'm not trying to knock on anyone, it's just fact. Like, showing it on screen, the plastic monsters, you get kind of cormony with it. Um, where it's more... It's, it's a spectacle, but it's not as horrifying. And then you have the stuff that's happening, like, off-screen in shadows or is implied, and that allows you to really build that horror. And I, I do love practical effects. If you're going to have something... <laughs> like, we always talk about the thing. I mean, we shouldn't talk about the thing this video. We it's, always it's talk about the thing. Every video we talk about the thing. I know, because it's, it's a good example of most things. 
The thing is, people are still debating who was infected and when. Because it's good story-wise. It was good source material yeah. to begin with. But also just... And then the remake the showed you they, the poor practical effect house that did all that work. For and nothing. then they just pu- just poured shit on it. Yeah. No, I, I prefer practical effects. I like the idea that the actor gets to actually look at what they're talking to and reacting to. I yeah. think... That makes a difference. Well, that part was that they did build all the practical effects. They shot all the practical effects. They just, mm-hmm. like, overlaid them with so much CG that you couldn't tell that they were practical effects. They didn't enhance the practical effect. They just overwrote them. And that's where I end up liking the Thing prequel. Yeah. There's also the fact that it was just also called The Thing, and it's like... Yeah. But it's the prequel. There could have been... No, you'd hate semicolons, but just put a... But there could have been. Semicolon camp one. And, you know, first search or something. No. There... No. <laughs> um, I did like some of the designs of the monsters, but, you know, you can see them in sketches of the creatures. And that's better <laughs> than trying to look at what they wound up with effects-wise. Here's my no swimming sign. I wanted to make it look like a no swimming sign, but a little off and a little wrong. I think I managed. Looks good. Good iconography. Well, thank you, little swimming man. I mean, swimming person, I suppose. Scribble doesn't have to have a gender. I'm trying to make a circle. <laughs> this was around the time. There was some graphic you showed me where... Like, typically in a, a yes-no graphic, you'll have green check mark, oh, red yeah. X. Yeah. But you showed me a graphic. It was red circle, black X. And I'm like, which one is the don't? Because yeah. red means don't, but X means don't, and you've separated them. Yeah, no, I hated it, so I are had they, to show you. Are they both don'ts? It, like, yeah, my brain did not like that. I had to show you because of that, specifically. And now I'm, now I'm upset all over again. <laughs> like green check mark yes red x no black x red circle what well, the fuck does well, that what mean? i love is that it was on a post about how to do something specific art wise it was specific to graphic design and yeah it's just like it's like you're not who i should be taking advice from <laughs> is this a troll post or yeah, is this a are trick? you or are you that like in the dunning kruger valley <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh Right back to Kruger. Oh my god. <laughs> Always. Now when I when I drew Freddy Krueger, I put him in a boiler room, just alone with a shadow. That's right. You do. A, this is like this should be part of that series because you do have a Michael Myers and a Freddy Krueger that we bring to con- horror conventions. Well, that's part of my thought with this one, but I don't know if it's um good. No, it's good. I'm telling you, we should we should. Okay. Just oh. Me trying to figure out water. Water is hard. This is this is my desperate attempt to make a murky, gross-looking. Oh, that works. But still, obviously, water. Yeah. Water. No, that lo- that works. Because I I had plans. But he's he's too high up. I think if I were to make this a print, I would add more to the upper part of the canvas and draw more above it the sign, and then just cut out the bottom a little bit. No. Just rearrange the proportions. Because, you know, a little headspace. Boy needs some headspace. What am I trying to do here? You're making the cool. water water. Brighter, darker. Did, did I get it? What color is water? Uh, <laughs> depends on what's around it. Depends on the sky above it. Trees. Happy little trees. Happy little trees witnessing a murder. Upsetting little trees. <laughs> trees. Kill them, Jason. Kill them all. Do it for mommy. I thought about doing a reflection of the trees and decided that would be too busy. So I just didn't. Well, if you want to for the print, you just take it and you flip it and then you just turn the, the brightness up and the opaqueness way down. Oh, I know this in theory. But, like, I think it would honestly be too much for the piece. Might be. It also depends on like, where the light source is. If it's a if it's a gloomy, 
if it's a gloomy day at Camp Crystal Lake, you're probably not getting a reflection off the water. Yeah. But I, I did try to add some texture to the trees here. No, you did, you did really good with the pushing back of just, the color values as it gets yeah. further away. Yeah, just... As we try to nice, shape the trees. A nice New Jersey forest. Yeah. The garden state. Also the lake state, evidently. I was born in Jersey, you know. Yeah, you're a native New Jersey. I remember very little of it, though. I was like three or four when we left. We go to New Jersey often enough, though. I think most of our conventions are in New Jersey. That's true. New Jersey has by been... state we do the most business in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah Jersey has been good to me. <laughs> like, as a person, it's been good to me. I appreciate it. I lived it. on Staten Island, which is essentially just, like, New Jersey, tech, but technically New York. I, uh, no. <laughs> I disagree. I don't know. <laughs> I played a lot of gigs in New Jersey. Very, very similar people in North New Jersey and Staten Island. It's a lot of crossover. Meh. Try not to be insulted. I'm happy with those clouds. But yeah, so here's here's what I wound up with. What a beautiful day at the lake to be stabbed with a no swimming sign. Yeah, and then I, I try to fiddle with the bubbles to make them more obviously bubbles. Life is the bubbles! Because the, the thought was that there's a person under that blob yeah. that was alive and is now not. But... Yeah. And Maybe for the print you do a little, like, a hand floating up. Something. Like you do the thing where it fades out real quick so you see the hand and start of the arm. Hmm. So it doesn't break the surface or anything, but it's just... Maybe, like, just a, a single finger. So here's the, the original proportions that I had. And then I decided that I could probably cut it shorter. So it winds up more of a... Um, Almost a square. More of a square? Right. Yeah, so yeah, there we go. Alright, nice. But for the print, I would just add more to the top so it's not so cramped together. Give them a little space to breathe. So that's my Jason. You could also, if you wanted to do it a lot wider and add like a, a dock or something, you could do yeah. that. There's things you could do to. It's beautiful. I love it. Thank you. My Jason. If you have drawings of serial killers that you've done, uh, send them to us. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Do you have a favorite slasher that we should draw? Let us know. Okay. Rock on, everyone.